All right. Just uh, just quickly, uh, this talk uh, happens today because I my flights got messed up um, via LA. So I think out there it says something about Drupal CI. So if anyone's here for that, that's not what this talk will be, and I'll understand if you leave. So what this talk is about is uh, Drupal 8 configuration management best practices. Uh, my name is Justin Randall. The Jeebus is sort of what I'm known as on the internet. Twitter, Drupal.org. Uh, I'm a grumpy old troll who pretends to know about computers. And... Awesome. Everyone can hear him a bit better. Is that better? Yeah. So uh, I worked in this uh, development cycle for Drupal. I worked uh, um, a lot on the configuration management system um, for D8, uh, which was fun and challenging. Um, uh, I work at Acquia in, uh, on the sort of our hosting platform. Okay, enough about me. So what I want to do, I want to give a little bit of an outline of uh, what the Drupal 8 configuration system is, and I'll refer to kind of the Drupal 7 analogs or, uh, to that, like what it's replacing. Um, I want to put forward an idea of what, what best practices could look like. Obviously, Drupal 8 hasn't even been released yet, so it's a little bit sort of presumptuous to talk about best practices for something that's not even a production system yet. Um, and I'd like people to ask questions as I go, but I'm, I've consciously try, I'm trying to keep this short enough to have time at the end because for the same reason like that Drupal, hasn't, Drupal 8 hasn't been released, a lot of this is just starting a conversation and having, you know, getting questions out there and getting ideas out there because none of us are really doing it for real yet because Drupal 8 is, is, is not released. So before I get started, has anyone used the Drupal 8 configuration management system in already? No, I mean, has anyone been involved in the, the contributions for it, development of Drupal 8? Um, who, who's used features in Drupal 7? Cool. Update hooks and functions to... Okay, so we've got quite a few sort of developers in the room, it sounds like, um, and I can see why you'd want to come to this if you haven't already used um, the, the Drupal 8 features. So let's start with a bit of an overview of what the config system is. It's a replacement for the variable system. Can people read that? I can probably bump it. Or can I bump it up? Yeah, okay. So what I've got there is basically the old variable set, variable get, variable delete. People know what I'm talking about with that, right? It's, it's basically just a table in Drupal and it has a key value. The value is just serialized, so just like whatever you pass to it, serialized function in PHP. Um, it has um, some nice features for small sites, like the entire table is loaded into memory on every request bootstrap, uh, which if you have a small, a small system, um, it's very, very fast, and it's a really good um, trade-off for small systems. If you have a big site with a lot of variables, it might not suit you so well. Um, another thing to notice about it is variable get here. This is the default in code. So if you ask for something from the variable system in Drupal 7 and there's nothing there in the database, you can provide a default. Uh, that's either, depending on your outlook, that either makes you want to laugh or cry. I tend to be in the cry camp, but a lot of people think that it's, it's a great feature. Um, one of the reasons that I pointed out is because that goes away uh, as part of the configuration system in Drupal 8. Basically, we're saying defaults are what you should provide at install time, but uh, the values that you get back should be in your configuration, not in your code. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a notable change. Another thing that the variable system in Drupal 7 features is terrible scope creep. So as well as having things that are like configuration, it also includes things like when was the last cron run and other examples people can probably bring up. That's really more state. It's not really a configuration setting. Um, for example, if you were migrating values from your dev environment to your test and test to prod, you probably don't want to move over the time that cron last run, last, last ran as part of that migration. So it's an example of Variable system just tends to be a dumping ground. It has all sorts of stuff in there that's not strictly configuration. Um, 
and in Drupal 8, uh, there's a new system called the state system. I'm not going to talk about it, but basically all the things that were sort of put into the variable system in Drupal 7 that weren't really configuration can now live in the state system in Drupal 8. Um, and th that's a nice cleanup. Um, that would be great if all we got out of configuration system in Drupal 8 was a replacement for variable set and variable get, that would be a big win, right? But in actual fact, we get a um, replacement for a lot more, and what I really want to focus on um, in this talk. And that's a replacement for, does everyone, rec who recognizes that? I'm not swearing at you all. <laughs> um, that's basically a Drush command to, to do stuff with features, and it's often done um, or a variation of that, depending on your workflow. Um, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but something when you're doing a release of um, new code in Drupal 7-based sites often involves things like running updb to update the database and then running some sort of features command to say, these ones are now, the, these ones are now what I want to run on my site. Um, and then the old update functions. Um, so a lot of what the configuration management system is aiming for in Drupal 8, apart from the sort of runtime configuration, is, sorry, is replacing those with a new sort of more feature-rich system um, so that you can basically work in a, you know, have a workflow where you'll have a site and you'll have different environments of that site um, and you can migrate configuration changes between those different environments. <laughs> and that's, they're the Drupal 7 ways of doing it. Um, with all their limitations, I mean features, right? Features is great until it's not, and then you know, you're in a world of pain. And features also has a, um, a scope that's like this, and like migrating stuff between, develop, um, between environments of a site is like that. So it was always sort of, um, a lot of people use it for the smaller job, even though it was built to try and solve a much, much harder problem, which is moving configuration between sites <laughs> that are not related. That's actually a very hard problem uh, and one that I have no interest in. <laughs> um, so the, the configuration management system is only really aiming to solve the problem of environments of the same site, not my blog and your blog, let's just swap configuration between them uh, if they're, when they're not related because um, that's very hard and some, I would say, quite a foolhardy uh, problem to try and solve. <coughs> So what do we get for the for variable get and variable set? Now in the, with, within the configuration system, you basically deal with objects. So system.site is the name of a configuration object. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can get at one of these. Um, I just used uh, one example uh, in Drupal 8. Once you have a configuration object, um, it's basically like uh, an array, a simple array. So um, and it, you can store anything that can be stored in YAML. Does everyone know what YAML is? Yeah, so you get, you get more than just strings. You get types. You get, you know, booleans, ints. Um, you get lists. So basically anything you can express in a PHP array um, of, of simple PHP types, you can store in, uh, in, in YAML. And the way you interact with it is if you want to just change things in memory, uh, config set name to something. In, in this case, this would literally change the site name uh, on, your, on your Drupal uh, site. When you call save, that's when it gets persisted. That's, that's, that's when it goes down to, to disk. When you, when you want to just get the values out, if you call get with no parameter, you get the whole lot. It's just an array with everything in that, uh, in that configuration object. If you pass in uh, a key, then you just get the, the value for that, for that path. Um, so that's, that's kind of like the runtime replacement. Um, when it comes to exporting your configuration, system.site will map to a YAML file called system.site.yaml. So that's kind of the, the tree of files. They map one to one. Um, and the other thing you'll note is that when you go get, there's no default. You can't pass a default to that. It's the value has to be in there, um, and I think that's a big advance um, uh, over the variable system. The other thing is configuration entities. So, if you have something like system, uh, 
the, the site settings, like the site name, site slogan, site email address, there's one of them, right? And, it's, and a lot of modules will have a sort of, like a settings file, essentially. And there's just one of those, and it'll be like my module name dot settings dot yaml, right? But what about things like views, image styles, all of that space? Um, that's basically what config entities are. They, they share um, code with the entity system as a whole in Drupal 8. So there's a, 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 like content entities, like nodes and all those comments, all those sorts of things. They, there's like a top level entity system and it sort of breaks into configuration entities and content entities. Um, these generally wrap a simple, so to speak, configuration file. So a config entity generally has uh, a config object underneath. And for views, it'll be something like the namespace, it'll be something like views.view.machineName.yaml, right, roughly. So most, most subsystems basically have a namespace that, that is static, like a prefix, and then you'll have the machine name of the thing that you're, you're um, storing, and that's like the machine name for a view. Um, and yeah, and so they, they have a kind of richer feature set, and a lot more code runs around the life cycle of a config entity versus just a simple configuration object. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like the runtime replacements for the variable system. The other thing is, has everyone seen this UI yet in Drupal 8? So even if you're not doing any of the stuff that I'm going to present a bit later in this talk, even if you're just uh, using FTP and like forms and stuff, you can do a complete configuration migration workflow between different environments. So um, the, this UI basically will export like a a, a, a zipped up file of your entire configuration in a tree, and it's just like a, a listing of YAML files. Um, you can go to the uh, import screen, upload a, a, a zip file, and it will like unzip uh, what you upload, and then it'll present you with screens that will basically show you the difference between your current site's configuration and uh, what the state of the tree is that you're trying to import. Um, I expect that almost no one should use this. I mean, it's there because we, like, we can't, we can't ship Drupal 8 with a requirement that you have to use Git for all of this stuff all the time. Um, so we, we have a UI that people can use, but we sort of don't really want people to use it unless they're just kind of playing around and they just want to try things out. Um, I'm actually going to spend a lot of the time in the rest of the talk talking about the ways that you should actually do imports and exports and stuff and it has nothing to do with this. Um, one of the other things is the single import export. So, uh, you know, you, you can add something to views where you can kind of see what a view will look like in code. Has anyone ever played with that? Like, um, that's kind of similar. So you can go into the single import export and look at basically the YAML representation of any configuration object in the system. And you can also paste YAML in and say, save. Um, it's very unsafe, don't do it. Um, it's there, if you know what you're doing, you're developing, you want to play with things, it's great. Um, one of the things that it does do is it makes it harder to figure out whether or not the, the thing that you're trying to change it will validate properly. Um, there's a lot of dependencies within configuration and uh, using these forms is, is not recommended. So that's kind of a, um, that's an overview of kind of what's in Drupal 8 and what, what things in Drupal 7 it replaces. Anyone have any questions? Want me to like, yeah? The import, um, where does it save that? Does it save it to like the file directory? Yeah, it's just in, basically what it has to do uh, is do a comparison. So the runtime configuration storage is actually the database by default, not, not files. So what it needs to do is take the, the zip unzip it somewhere temporarily, and then start to do comparisons of the objects. Yes, yes. So, yeah? Uh, downtime, it depends. That, that's an, like, uh, it's kind of, that's kind of like another, a variation of 
when in Drupal 7, when you want to run update hooks? Should you have downtime or not? Kind of depends on what you value uh, and what your setup is, whether or not you can still serve um, traffic while disrupt potentially disruptive changes are running. There's no one answer. If you want to be safe, you should you can take your, down, your site down for a little while, do the, you know, do the import and then put it back up again. But it's not, it, it depends on um, you know, what your setup is. You probably you probably don't want that. That sounds a little bit like what you want with install profiles. Like that's sort of how you create things. And I, I'm not touching on it here because I want to get to the the workflow of like you've got a site up and you've got environments and you're migrating through. But uh, in the similar vein. Yeah, but the thing is that's actually covered in, so when you have a module, there's a convention for having uh, a config directory. And basically when your module is installed, the configuration system will look in there and go, oh cool, here's the defaults and I'll set them up when I install the module. And you can do the same with, thing with profiles. So um, that's kind of, instead of having like in Drupal 7, if you've got defaults for things, then in your code, whenever you do variable get, you'll have just like some random thing that is the default value. Um, in Drupal 8, that will be expressed as a set of configuration files, and they will be the defaults for all the things when it's installed, and it's, it's a much, much cleaner system, I think. I, yeah? Um, is there a way of knowing what's in the database versus what's in the files? There is, yes, but that, um, it's important that I know exactly what you mean, because for example, with something like features, there's this concept of kind of like, here's the code, and here's the, with so this, sort of thing, I guess. Is it, it's is kind it, of, but you know, it's not. Like, uh, when you take a running site and you export it, the config tree, the intention is that that is something that you'll then take and import somewhere else, and that's it. It doesn't have any meaning outside of that. So the runtime configuration values are it. There is no like, oh, and then you can drop something on the file system somewhere. You can say, well, this one reads from the files and this one reads from the dot, but none of that. It's like the runtime configuration is the runtime configuration. That's it. Um, there are some exceptions, but let's, I'll get to that. Um, so, right, best practices. Dead hasn't been released yet. What are you talking about? Um, just to be really clear, this is a discussion. We, you know, uh, different people in the community, different companies, I work at Acquia, we're sort of actively working on what things can we add based on this system to make it easier. Um, literally just yesterday or the day before, a proposal in uh, Drush's GitHub queue to add config merge uh, was created, and that's something that's still being um, tossed around. So imagine if you wanted to have a development environment and a production environment, and you want to run a Drush command that like took the config from one environment and like pulled it down and imported it into uh, another environment. Um, still being worked out, these tools are still, uh, the, the whole process is still in flow. Um, and like, if now is a good time to get involved if you have strong opinions about it. Um, and what I want to do in the demo is kind of walk through one possible scenario and it'll hopefully help people to sort of uh, tackle it and think about it. So what, what are some of the best practices I'm gonna suggest? One is track your configuration in Git. So what I've got here, let's imagine that's the Drupal directory. That might be heretical to a lot of people. A lot of people like to have Drupal be the, the root of their Git directory. I don't care, whatever. If you want to put this inside there, that's fine. But the idea is that every time you do a release to production and you have, you'll have a configuration tree that you deploy to production, just like you would deploy new code. Like that it should just be part of your release process. Um, so you would expect, like for this whole tree, this is like, uh, this is master, right? So this is head, but you would expect to have a bunch of different branches and tags for releases and stuff. And the flow of changes inside the configuration directory, that is just a whole bunch of YAML files that express the state of configuration, will have exactly the same sort of life cycle and flow as any other code. 
So that means things like if you get tasked with doing a job and it involves configuration changes, then you will create a branch called foobar and you will make a set of changes and you'll express that set of changes as changes inside this configuration VCS directory. And when, when your uh, change is ready to be pushed into the master branch or whatever your workflow is, there will be a configuration import. And that, and that way you'll have a known set and like a lockstep sort of release process of what the changes are. Um, it's a pretty important difference to, uh, and a pretty important concept. And I think it's a very, it's a key part of how best practices will develop uh, in Drupal 8. So if anyone doesn't understand what I just said or has questions around it, it's probably a good time. Yeah. It's, it's similar, but it's way, way better. Because features, as I said, has a bunch of concepts that are really bad. Like, you can have code and database, and which what's running will it kind of depend. One overrides the other, whatever. Um, the config VCS thing is, here are a set of changes that I'm going to deploy. Once I deploy them, that's it. What, the, the way the site runs is what the runtime configuration is, period. Never, ever looks at what's inside there, except for a deployment process. Much simpler and and a lot more robust. It's a question. The database. Yep. Part exactly. So part of your deployment process, like how would you normally when you do a release, you would do something. If you're doing a features based release. You'd probably do like maybe you do um, drush up db to get the database changes, and then you might do the you know drush some features commands depending on your workflow to to deploy the new features, right? So what would change is instead of doing the features stuff you, when you do a deployment, you'll do a drush config import, right? If you've got a scripted flow, and then it'll go cool. There's a set of changes here and pull them in, and just the same as the update db stuff. When it looks in there, if there are no changes, it just goes. Well, there's nothing to do and moves on. So, um, so in D7, if I wanted to lock down a variable, mm -hmm. and I didn't want someone messing around with construction. Right. Like it's just I want this to be this all yes. the time. Yes. Yes. I could just set that in comp. Yes, you can do the same in. That was what I. Good question, and that was what I alluded to about. There are no defaults. It's a little bit more complicated. Okay. It's kind of like that. You can set things in settings.php. Basically, there's a config variable and then within that it's kind of like system.site something something. That's it. That always wins. Okay, so you can still block those things. Yes. Yeah. But I mean I would suggest if you're at that state you have some other problem. I mean it would be better now that we have sort of one path for all configuration changes, there are already people working on modules that depend will depending on an environment just won't that basically turns it into a read only system. So config changes just won't work. They'll just say, no, you can't change it. So you can do that uh, cleanly w with one system now because uh, there's, there's only really one place to make the changes. I might just have a check it. The YAML files <coughs> in that config VCS directory, are yeah. they, can you serve them? Like if it's inside the Docker of Drupal, yeah. can someone type a path and see what the config is? Or if you have a bad configuration, yes. Okay. And that's why, I mean, this is why in my mind, just don't do that. Yeah. Like, yeah don't have it in the web root, but I understand that some people like to have the web root as the base of the git and then point and use like, you know, drupal.org as one remote and blah, 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 and that's fine. Um, just make sure that the config VCS directory is protected if you put it inside the web root. Or better, just don't put it in the web root. Sorry, so just the, the config VCS, what's the tree under it like? It's, it's a flat, flat, it's a flat list. list. So is when... That all change, all that's the whole, it's the whole tree. It's the whole tree. So, it's the bunch of YAML files. This. So, all of them. This system.site, when you, when you export that, is system.site.yaml, right? So, this is a unique name that refers to every configuration object on the system. And it tends to be, in a typical Drupal fashion, it's like module is the first part, and that's kind of your namespace, and then whatever underneath that. Um, Another one, yes. Yep. So there is a whole system of configuration overrides. Um, 
it's a it's a big question and it's still in development. So we've worked with uh, the domain um, upstream to to kind of keep them up to speed with the Drupal 8 config changes. Um, actually don't know what the like current state of head is of, of the domain modules in Drupal 8. Um, but we've been working with them the whole way through. So we tried not to break them. I want to try and keep going. Um, use a feature branch workflow. Uh, so this is kind of what I said before, but there's no reason at all if you are making a set of changes, if you're a developer and you get tasked with okay, I want to do, I want to move some blocks around, I want to, you know, a whole set of things that are sort of like maybe site builder-y um, type roles or, or jobs, you can now use a feature branch workflow. Um, does everyone know what I mean by a feature branch workflow? Yeah, so you can basically, assuming you've got a shared config, uh, Git repository and, you know, you, you're working on the foobar feature, then you'll work in your branch and then when it's ready, it'll get merged into, you know, master or whatever the deployment um, setup is. So this really flows from having this config VCS directory, uh, which expresses a set of changes that you want to make in a deployment, just like code, right? So when, you, when you're working on a, a code change to a module, you'll, you'll create a branch and then you'll hack away and there'll be a set of differences against whatever master is. It's exactly the same workflow. Um, takes a while maybe to kind of get used to it, but hopefully you'll come to appreciate that that's actually awesome. That means it's exactly the same workflow you use to do development in teams, right? You have a central repo and you work in branches and you have some sort of merge process, exactly the same. Um, hopefully people will come to see that that's, that's an awesome thing. This is your question, right? Some of us will get lucky, right? Some of us will be able to work with clients or internal teams in our companies and they will accept our request where we say, no, <laughs> config changes only happen via deployments, period. No production changes. Um, I can't stress this enough. If you can get away with it, get away with it, right? Your life is gonna be easier in Drupal 8 if you can just say, we have this powerful new way to develop configuration changes in, in the lower environment and push them out to production. So you don't need to do that in prod anymore. Thank you. Goodbye, right? If you can get away with it, do it. It's gonna make things a lot easier. Um, and hopefully the fact that this is built into Drupal 8 uh, and hopefully you know, a lot of people using it and the bugs will be found and it'll start to become reliable, um, that, will, you know, that will become something that more clients will accept, right? But we'll see, right? Then there's the rest of us, right? <laughs> like, there's just going to be a bunch of us where no matter what we say, people are still going to make production changes to config, right? That's just, that's, that's, that's life, unfortunately. Um, and the basic thing I'm going to suggest here, and I'll show a possible way of doing it in the demo, is track your production changes also in a, in a branch in Git. So when you do a deployment, and you, let's say you have a tag because you're saying or whatever, however you do it, you should know like the, the point in time in Git, you know, a Git hash that, that represents this deployment. Create a branch off that, right? And take all the changes that, have in, that are made in production and express them as changes against that branch. Because when you want to bring them back into development environment, they're now in Git, right? So whatever workflows you already have, you can use in the same way. Um, so I'll actually show, show a simple um, version of that, so hopefully it'll become clear, but um, that's another very important part of best practices where you can't stop people making production changes. Will there be a version of like um, SQL sync, like config sync to Drush? Yes, so config merge, like I was saying, that's actually a proposal that's in the, the Drush queue right now. Um, the Drush tools are really good. I like anything with Drupal 8 and Drush. They break periodically because they get behind, but then they usually catch up really quickly. Um, so you can go and play with these things um, right now. Okay, so I want to do a demo. Um, everyone cross your fingers and everything. Uh, I'm gonna need the internet and hopefully it'll work. So what I want to introduce to people is two sites. 
one called, can people see the domains names? So these are two identical sites that I've just installed um, and which, uh, .com. I should have done this before the talk, there we go. So these were created with this really simple script, which is really just copying and pasting stuff from my history. So it's a really bad script, but like this was enough for me to create those two sites. Um, and as you can see, Drush figures heavily uh, in, in, in this whole thing, and it's already usable to, to play around with this stuff. But I don't really want to get too much focus on the script, but just to try and get across the idea that it's already easy to script a bunch of these things using Core and Drush, um, which is nice. So I created these two things. It's just an install of Drupal, a bunch of devel generate to generate a bunch of content. Um, and one of them is called CMI prod, right? The other one's called CMI dev, and obviously the idea is that one's development and one is prod. Um, what I want to do uh, is basically deploy a basic feature. So you'll notice that uh, there's no search bar, right? This is a really common thing, right? You have, by default, Drupal doesn't let you search content on sites if you're anonymous, right? which for a lot of people and a lot of sites is not what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow um, anonymous users to come to the site, use the search bar. The other thing that's really common is if I log in, do, 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 the search bar there is here. A lot of people want it up there, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you kind of how that might work. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to need to do is uh, roles. Uh, wait a second. Permissions search. Okay, so you can't use search if you're an anonymous user. Let's change that. Doop, doop. Wait, where can I see it? Okay, so that's that. And the other thing is obviously a lot of people like to have block layout where search is in the header. So let's do that and let's save it. Okay, so I now have, if I log out, where do I log out? Add. Add. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm actually just having problems with the mouse. Cause... All right, log in out. All right, so now you can see up here I can search for stuff. Right, I'm an anonymous user, but I, I, it prod doesn't have that. So the next trick is to uh, there we go. Um, so now if I go to the web route, and I go drush sim, which is a shortcut for config import, and x is a short sex, sex, cx, whatever, <laughs> it's, uh, for exporting. Um, so let's do that. Uh, and one of the first things it asks is where? Where would you like this? Um, inside the, the settings um, file, you can specify different destinations. Basically, that's the name. And then what the value for that is any old path you feel like. So in this case, inside the CMI dev directory, like not inside the web root, I have a config VCS directory. And I've taught Drupal about it by putting in, the, in config VCS as a name with a path inside settings so it knows, how, it knows where to go. So there we go. It's telling me will be deleted. Yes, that's fine. It's in version control. So track changes. Cool. So what happened is it just ran, and now if I do git diff, you can, uh, yes, I can do that. Better? Yeah, so you can see that my, my uh, tree now has some changes to the block, blah, 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 
and it's basically this is stuff I don't know about because I think there's still some bugs. But the, here's the change that kind of we really care about. Notice that the search is now in the header instead of cyber first. And if we keep looking, we can see that anonymous and authenticated roles now have search content. Right. So I think that kind of looks right. So. Um, Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe this. Right. Okay. So, bugs in here, which is cool. Um, so, what I'm going to do is something I just forgot to do, which is I'm going to go git check out search anon. Okay. So now I've created a feature branch. I should have done that before I made the changes, but just pretend I did do that. Um, I've got a set of changes, they look right. I can use git to try and like figure out what they look like. So then I can go git commit allow a non search. Don't do this, obviously much better messages. Committed, okay. So now what I wanna do is I wanna move that to production. So let's assume there was some process of testing and everyone's happy, right? So, um, <laughs> Right? That's the way it works. So now what I'm going to do is push to origin search a non. Now, internet? Yes. Okay. So now, if we go back here, you'll see, ba bam, compare and pull request. Cool. Allow a non search. Create a pull request. Blah, right? Assume I go and I look and again, Let's just assume that all, it's all, all happy. So I'm going to merge it. Right. So now I should be able to uh, go back to here and go to CMI prod. Right. And git pull. Bam. Okay. So git log, you can see there was a pull request that was merged. Uh, and what this means is that the files that are inside config VCS now have those set of changes. But you'll see that like uh, the site, uh, CMI prod, still looks like the old one. Nothing's happened, right? This is just sort of like going out to the system that you want to deploy to and pulling down um, code but not necessarily applying the changes. Depending on your workflow, that might mean write a separate directory and you haven't updated the link that points to what current is anymore, right? Um, so what I want to do is to actually make that live. So what I'm going to do is go drush fig import. And it's going to say, wait, where do you want, oh, hold on, wait, wait. Drush config import. Right, where would you like to take that from? Again, completely up to you. The names and the paths, you, you control all of that. So I want to get that from config VCS. And it's going to say, here are the things that have changed, right? Now, what's nice is that you can do uh, preview equals diff config VCS. And instead, it'll look like that. Here is what the changes will look like. So if you want to just kind of cowboy it and like just eyeball the changes and then pull them in, you can do that too. So let's go yes. Uh, it's not a quick change. Um, it is taking the whole two trees and comparing them. So even though the set of changes is small, it has to figure out that the set of changes is small. Um, so it doesn't, it's not really quick. Uh, it'll probably get quicker once we start releasing Drupal 8 and we start optimizing it more. So. Um, Fresh. Bam. So that was the whole flow. And like, it's, it's pretty awesome, right? I mean, that, I'm not doing anything there except using standard Drupal 8 core and Drush. Um, so, so that's really nice. So more, but wait, there's more. So the next thing is, um, what is the next thing? I probably put it in here. So now let's deal with the person you can't convince that they shouldn't make changes on prod, <laughs> right? And we're all, we're all laughing now because something. So I'm gonna go to prod, I'm gonna log in, 
and I'm going to, maybe, let, let's say the persona here is I'm a grumpy sysadmin. I know nothing about that persona, but let's pretend. Um, and I look at my site, and I've just been woken up because some idiot developer pushed this thing out, and, wait, sorry, this mouse is, I notice that there's literally no caching. So I go, screw you, intern screw you developer, I, I want to go to sleep. I'm going to save those changes. So now, in the, in the configuration that's running in the database, there's a set of changes and they're not consistent with what was just imported via, via, our, via our import. So what I think, like one answer to that is, again, assuming a bunch of things that are not just in this demo, but assuming you've released from a tag or something, um, you probably have a, let's say, you have a git hash, right? Maybe that git hash is for, for a tag instead of this, just the head of master. Um, so you might do something like git um, sb, you know, release two, whatever the hell, whatever, whatever your naming scheme is. Um, so now we have something which is on, uh, based on the last released uh, git hash, right? Um, and now what I can do from prod is go drush. What am I going to do? Export, right? Okay, I want to go here. Yes. So now, it's sort of in a very similar way, I have my changes, right, expressed as, as uh, you know, a git diff. Now, I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to go git commit. Um, Stupid devs. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to, yeah? Would that go to a local path if you're, so, um, I'm not sure I follow. Maybe I don't actually know whether Drush upstream supports it. It probably should. I know that the configuration merge command that they're working on right now understands aliases. So if the aliases are on the same machine or on separate machines, it'll do the right thing with SSH and etc. Um, but I'm sure that Drush will build that. Right. It's just kind of just a matter of coding. Right. And I think a lot of people will have that need. So, so now what I've done is I've committed that. Um, there's a Drupal, uh, Drupal module called config log, and what it does is it records all the configuration changes. That could be a source if you wanted to automate the commits to this branch. You know that this branch is like clean, like comes right off uh, your last commit to, to your last released commit. So you should be able to just commit on top of it cleanly, right? So you should be able to automate it. So let's assume this all happened in some background process instead of me doing it manually. So uh, then I do git push origin. What did I call it? It's two. So now I kind of have the opposite problem, right? I've got uh, I've got a set of changes that are on prod and they're on dev, uh, and I want to bring them down uh, into my development tree. So so, push. Okay. So the next thing I will do um, is go back to see my dev. Um, let's just make sure everything's there. And now, basically, in, in I'm going to say. Um, there's two, there's actually two options here. Like Git gives you the tools, but not like the, the, um, the ability, but not the policy, right? So one thing that just happened is that change could be valid. Awesome, we need to pull it into our dev workflow. Another thing that could happen is that was just a complete mistake and we don't actually want to pull it in. So a valid point, uh, choice at this point is you just don't merge in this change, right? <coughs> it's not automatic that any change that's made on production, you want to keep, 
because maybe the next thing you want to do in the next deployment is kill that change. You don't actually want to integrate it. Um, so this, at this point, there's, a, there's sort of a question of policy to think about. But, so, but in this case, this is, let's assume that that was the right thing. The grumpy sysadmin was right for a change. Um, and what we actually want to do is integrate this, uh, this change. So it's exactly the same process. Um, create pull request, merge pull request, confirm merge. All right. So now you can kind of, I hope you can all kind of guess what's going to happen now. Yeah? Yeah? The, which, which, which one would you like to see? So like Git, GitHub just has... Um, yes, you can. You can see when you do a... If you take a, a zip of the configuration tree and you go to the import form and you click upload, it'll grab it, unzip it all, and then it'll present your UI with the differences. Sorry. Similar, similar, it's similar to diff in 307. Yeah, but there's no UI like in feature. When you like in 307, you go and you see like some features already. Yeah, yeah, because, because and that's great. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's an advance. There is no such thing. Right? There's no such thing. I think what you sort of want is a preview. So like uh, you can see the difference expressed in changes in YAML files, right? I think you were saying you would like to see the difference in the actual view, like previewing a node, or is there some other thing? No, the fact that you just did this whole thing, uh, and you bring it to production, I mean, even after it doesn't allow you to do that, like, you probably are not supposed to do that. You would usually, well, it's more for easy, like right? you go to It's Git, you can do whatever you like no, on any environment. You pull up the database, and mm -hmm. then locally you go to the features page and check what's all written, and then it's like, why it's all written. Right. So, okay, then you submit it locally, Right, so, I mean, here I think I'm... I'm That's what that merge command Well, the thing, the thing is, like, what I'm trying to say here is maybe you don't use GitHub, oh, but... Sorry, in sorry, sorry, sorry. So the question is, at the very end of all this, if yep. I do not want to create a branch on my uh, production, uh -huh. I want to pull the database, I will see that there is a change in database, but my config is not... How do I see that the config doesn't look like the same? It's not the same as the, as the database. So can you know something? Oh. I, I think I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is um, a change has been made in prod, in the data, like in the runtime storage, and then you've got the last config tree that was imported. Yeah. How, how can you see the diff between those? Yeah. So what I'm saying is just always express them as YAML files and use Git. What's... No. So but if you're just building the database, you always have to do an export to see if it's changed. There's no way to say that the database that's currently active has changes that aren't stored in the configuration tree. Yeah. So without, without exporting the... Like yes. The yes. Without yes. Yes. So, but yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think I can see what people are saying. So imagine if you didn't track the changes in prod. That's the basic assumption you're yes. making. Yeah. So just don't do that. Yeah. You're, you're in for pain if you don't track the changes in prod against the last import. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. yeah, you could totally do that. But so you know what's great? This is the discussion I wanted, and I'm sure whatever I present here, people are going to do something else because this is kind of like just taking the primitives and choosing a workflow. Yeah. I would suggest at all points, if you can use Git on a set of YAML files, do it. Any other workflow, in my opinion, is not going to be as good. It's just that simple. So just. Don't ever, ever do anything where you can't express changes as git commits. Because when it comes to pretty much everything that most of us do as a workflow around deployments, it's changes in git. So say I have a client and um, I've done everything the right way. Mm -hmm. And they've got the site, mm -hmm. they've got some privileges that allow them to change settings, and they've got right. some changes to settings. Yep. Without trash access on the server, because it's production yep. environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to quickly check if they've overridden any changes? No, no, there isn't. So yeah. How do you actually know that? Like, it's great that you know that your sysadmin made that change. Right. But I've been in a situation where, right at the last minute, where I'm like deploying something to production, the client yep. has their own repos with their own branches and they've made changes they haven't told me about. 
Right. And right now I've got most conflict. Right. I can, like create any type of thing. Yep. But if there's no way for me to see yep. that they've been doing their own thing without telling me, yep. how do I know that I'm not about to accidentally just blow away a bunch of stuff? Well, you, when you... Hold on. When you do the import, you'll know. Whenever you do an import, the set of changes will be here are the set of changes. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't look right at that point, that's terrible because it's right at the end. You don't want to be at that point. But until you say yes, nothing's nothing's changed. So. The clients don't get be the same as if they made changes to code. Yeah. So, hold on. I, I would say that there is a Uh, no, th like the 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 config UI yeah. that I that I pointed out before, um, when you want to say show me some differences, you need a starting point. Yeah, so right. if you you if you want to if you want to keep around like a, a table of your last release, you could use it to uh, ex to see a set of changes. But that thing that you showed was just then in Drush. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Totally. Totally. All it, all it's doing uh, is defaulting to like checking a staging directory and yeah. and showing you diffs. So, like with some a standard Drupal module, you could build something that took any arbitrary uh, starting point and show you the difference between that and your running production yeah. uh, config. So. Um, all the building blocks are there. There's no limitations. It's just we don't have it in core right now. If yeah. it doesn't land in core, someone will build a module. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I have these things of passion. Yep. Right. Yeah, I have curiosity about the Drupal community. Yeah. Because I think it's really interesting. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that you can actually build something that will actually be a Another thing I should say is um, I'm, I'm, I'm behind, so maybe you're more up to date than me. Um, so maybe what we're all asking for is already there. Right. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, aware of, I'm aware of limitations in time. What I'm going to try and do is see... Synchronize, there's nothing there. Your, your current configuration has changed. Yeah? It's already there. <laughs> let, let me, hold on, let me just do all that again. Look at this cool thing that you're like. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's already there. I mean, underlying this whole thing is basically, you know, the ability to take a list of YAML files in a directory and compare it to what is in the current runtime um, setting, uh, the current runtime settings for a site. So, when I last looked at this, this wasn't there, but it's there now because the the building blocks are, you know, fundamentally there. Um, it's really straightforward. Hold like on. Oh, what about the, uh, the you earlier? All that does is respond to lifecycle events. So, when a configuration object changes. There's, there's a life cycle you can hook into the event, and what it does is basically takes, um, when, you're changing, uh, when you're changing something, you get the two objects. You get the old one and the new one. So what it does is basically looks at that, saves a whole bunch of information, which user is doing it, that sort of stuff, and just writes it as a row in the database. So something that ran like on cron or something that was better than that, that, you know, whatever, some other system could just read those off and turn them into commits. Um, and then you just you have that whole thing as a git history. Yes. Yep. So you can do all of that um, in your like in settings PHP. You can override anything in configuration in settings PHP. So you could use one one way to do it would be versioned that way. Um, there's also a full config override system, uh, which just another set of things I didn't even talk about. Um, a lot of that is used for language um, and localization. 
um, but it can also be used for environment-based stuff. But that's a whole other thing. I'm not sure that's mostly a sort of a political question, so to speak. Like, a module to do that would be trivial. And in fact, I think there already is one. Um, just to basically take the, the storage driver for the configuration system and just be like, oh, this is prod, no writes. Um, whether or not it'll get into Drupal core, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else, I haven't looked in the queue recently whether, whether such an issue exists. I don't, I don't have a feeling for whether or not it would get in. I'd be in favor of it, but. You know. Is that uh, reflected on the, state, uh, the report status page? Is that reflected on the report so status page? The report status, the site system, uh, the uh, <coughs> status report. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Where? So maybe that could be another, I mean, you know, it's Drupal. So it can either be a module that does that or it can be a core patch, depending on who wants to yeah. apply for it. Um, I think that's basically all I had. I wanted to show the two sides of the coin, you know, taking something from development and pushing it out to production. I wanted to show what you have to do or, the, or that you can do sane merges back down um, where, where you don't have a choice. Um, but again, if you take anything away, it's think in terms of your standard Git development workflows. Like that's basically the promise here. If you have a certain workflow now, you can probably integrate this into it. Um, yeah. I just have one question about environment-based differences in config. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? Would that be the comp settings? In you could like do it that way. Yes. Yes. Yep. Got one minute. Go. Uh, I, it's a two part question. Uh, it seems like there might be a hangover from when something was supposed to be on disk. Mm -hmm. like, and that's the difference between the active and staging directories. I presume that's arbitrary. And mm -hmm. that's right. Yes, yes. The active directory is not a thing anymore. Okay, it's not a thing. Good. Uh, the second one is in features, I used to build feature silos. Mm -hmm. which Yes. Don't do that. Use Git. I mean, seriously. Like, if I'm working, if we're in a we're in a development team, you're working on feature bar and working feature foo. We might be working on the same files while we're doing the development. We just use Git. One of us wins. One of us gets our stuff integrated up first, and then the other one has to like pull back some changes and maybe there'll be conflicts and I'll work them out, and then you know then I'll move on and do my you know try and get my branch into the main line. So it's the same. It's the same thing, and that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. Is like, you can just use Git now. So just use that flow, and that's that's how you. Sorry, you haven't asked the question. And actually, I've is there is someone speaking next here? Am I holding anyone up? It's oh, it's lunch. Okay, well, fuck it. Go. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, that's the defaults. That's the defaults, right? So, like, the, the runtime list, the differences that you saw there, there's basically, um, for each role, there's a list of permissions. Uh, right. So, and there's only one of those for a site. Yeah. Um, so, how would you do, like, in a distribution where you have... Thanks, features, everyone. ...feature sets that they may not want to enable all of the things, all of the things... Right. I'm not sure I follow. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, does features still have a place in some way or Maybe. Way? Yeah, I don't, I mean, features, as far as I understand, they're doing development on D8. Okay. I don't know what they're doing, yeah. but I'm sure there's a bunch of polish on top of what we ship in core, and there'll be a bunch of use cases that we miss. I'm just thinking it seems like if you had a site that had a gallery and a forum, and you only wanted to enable one of them on right. an, an instance of the site, using yeah. that distribution, how do you that's a different use case. Yeah. yeah. You could probably create a, uh, just a module. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, everyone. Come and talk to me if you want.